All right, fight fans, it's time for our next bout of the night. Making his way down to the ring, a warm welcome, please, for Jose Marufo. See Johnny coming. Okay, here's Jose Marufo. I got into boxing because, I, you know, I was, since I was a kid, I always liked to fight. I was fighting at school, in the streets, and everywhere. So boxing, what's a, what's a sport that I fall in love with? Right hand down. Boxing, it's my, it's my job, so I'm at the gym 24-7, getting left. ready. Three good left hooks. Every time I go into a fight, you know, I'm getting into a tough fight, so I just get ready for anybody, for any kind of style. I'm ready for whatever he want to bring. And he'll be fighting Giannis Bermpilis, Johnny the Greek from Larissa, Greece, via Toronto. through Toronto, and now calls Miami home. And now about to make his way down to the squared circle. Welcome, please, Ionis Bermpilis. There he is, Johnny the Greek. I'm very passionate by it. I bring the fight, I bring the heat, I bring the smoke. And that's why it will happen on February 26 in Brampton, Ontario. And you will see a lot of fireworks. I promise you that. You will see a lot of fireworks. I'm coming to win. I don't know how that will take. It will take a knockout. If the knockout will come, let it come. Headlines for Giannis, false combination. I will show my skills. I will show my talent. I will show who I am when I box, and the victory will be mine. All right, there he is. All right, here's David Neiman with the introductions for our fourth bout of the evening. Super lightweights, fighting eight rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Owl Boxing presents this bout scheduled for eight rounds or less in the welterweight division. Our judges score in the bout at ringside, Jasper Kujavski, Jeremy Hayes, and Jim Monkelbond. And once the action begins, the third man in the ring, Mark Simmons. Introducing first, on my left, fighting out of the blue corner and tonight wearing checker pattern trimmed with red, his official weight, 139 and a half pounds. He enters the ring with a record of 13 wins against 11 defeats, two draws, one win coming by way of knockout. He hails from Phoenix, Arizona, by way of Agua Prieto, Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Jose Marufo. And his opponent on my right, fighting out of the red corner and tonight wearing blue trimmed with green. His official weight, 141 pounds even. His record is outstanding with eight wins against only one defeat. Four wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Pembroke Pines, Florida, by way of Larissa, Greece. Here is Ionis Johnny the Greek Bampili. We went over the instructions in the dress room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to the both of you. Mark Simmons, former Commonwealth Games gold medalist, the referee for this contest. Jasper Kajewski, Jeremy Hayes, and Jim Monkelbon will be the judges for this contest. Eight rounds, super lightweights, and here we go. Both these fighters look very quick. Clash of heads early on. 
Yeah, they're both moving in with their heads down. Jose stone some bombs early on. Like I said in the pre-fight, Johnny Brimplis comes to fight. He trains hard, and he's going to, I mean, once you light that match and, and get him going, he's going to be going nonstop. Jose Marufo out of Agua Prieta, Mexico, now fighting out of Phoenix, 31 years old. 13 wins, 11 losses, 2 draws. The Zero Miedo, no fear. Zero Miedo. Well, he's stepping towards Johnny with no fear, and that's a good opportunity for Johnny to stick that jab. And like I said earlier, with all these guys fighting these tough, Phil or, uh, sorry, Mexican fighters, they got to be able to, to use that jab and use their boxing skills to make it an advantage for them. When they stand there and trade, it makes an advantage for something they're used to doing. Marufo had an impressive record before a six-bout losing skid, then he won his next bout back in May right here at the Owl's Nest, the unanimous decision of Angel Rodriguez, who was 11-0 at the time. So that was a bit of a stunner there. He's, maybe he likes fighting in Canada. Clash of heads by both men. Referee Mark Simmons checks here to make sure there's no blood. Rufio seemed to catch the worst of that head collision. Yep. That's it. Jose kind of moving him forward his head a little. Both of them kind of moving with the head a little bit. Mm -hmm. As they're letting their shots go. Johnny is bleeding from the head clash. Yes. Right on the top of the yep. head. You can see this, the, the cut in the scalp. Now, will that affect Johnny now that he sees the blood? Um, I don't think it's going to affect him because he knows it's coming from his head, but it could distract him and hamper him moving forward because the blood looks like it's right over top of the eyeball. When that blood starts reading, um, leaking into your eye, it, it stings, it's sticky, it's an inconvenience. It, you know what I mean? If it's on his left eye, he's not going to be able to see the right hand as clear as he would had it not be bleeding in it. And he gets hit with a few hard right hands there from Jose Mufario. Jose's pouring it on early on in this fight. Johnny got to get off the ropes. Johnny's against the ropes. Hold on. You gotta get... He's got to gain the composure. He's got to yep. get off those ropes and get to the center of the ring. Final There's nowhere for him to go sit on those ropes with a strong bear like Jose Marufo throwing those hard shots. Now, is it possible that he got hurt a little bit in that clash. I, mean, I think it, he might have got stung by a little bit. I don't think he was hurt badly, Joe, but enough to stop him, to put him on the ropes, to defend the vicious onslaught from Jose Marufo, which didn't, if you're a judge, it's not a winning round for you if you're standing there blocking, defending for your life against big hard shots from Jose Marufo. Does it change your your, your attitude in the ring when you get cut, on like, cut like that? Because I mean, he, you can see him trying to wipe it off. and, and it Like I said earlier, Joe, I'm sure he knows it's from his head. If not, his corner is going to be telling him now. It's not really a threat for the fight to be stopped because he has a cut on top of the head. Though it'll bleed consistently, I've had a head cut before. It's very tough to stop. The only thing that could possibly hurt um, Johnny is if the blood is trickling into his eye during the round. But he got a nice experienced cut man in his corner. Lance the legend. Lance, yes. Lance, the Lance the man Armstrong. Cut man Campbell. And both men go to the center of the ring and start training instantly. And Jose Marufo just swarming. He is Johnny a, he's a buzzsaw right now, isn't he? Johnny got to catch him in between. He got to try and tie him. He's got to get off those. Yep. He's got to get off those ropes, especially Definitely. leaning back with that chin. Yep. Because Jose Marufo oh, is going to keep Jose throwing looked shots. like he got cut as well above his eye. Is that a clash of head or is that a punch? That looks like a bad cut. Both fighters. They're cut now. Having cut. Yep. Nothing coming from the forehead of uh, Johnny. The Greek here right at this particular time, so the Cubman seems to have been able to close it. Marufo, that's another story. He is bleeding right now. 
Nice combination there by Johnny the Greek as he moves him. And this is where Johnny the Greek's got it. He's got a box on the outside because it's very tough for Jose Marufo to land a clean shot. But when Johnny's sitting on the ropes, it makes it a lot easier for Marufo to land his shots. Yep. He's got a box from the outside right there to make it hard for Jose Marufo. Oh, Just like that left hook right inside. there. Big left hook by Burpless. But when he goes straight back on the ropes like that, there's nowhere for him to go. Be able to work that jab. Get up. Johnny the Greek. Center the ring or keep uh, Marufo on the ropes. That'd be the strategy right here. But it's tough to do against a, a charge like Jose Marufo, who's who's here to win. He's here to fight. He's living in the United States now. He's living the American dream. He wants to fight and win and build a life for his family. Right. Nice combination by Burpolis. Pinning Marufo in the corner. Mark Simmons steps in to break him up. Double jab. Marufo is definitely going to go out on his shield. He is, but Combination Johnny Brimbless landing Brimbless. some nice clean shots and rolling in and out. That's what he has to do against the charge of Jose Marufo. He's got to box, roll out, and get out of the way for a receive. Under 30 seconds to go in round number two. A definitely a different fight here in round two. Final seconds of the round. Burpolis getting a warning from Simmons for getting right at the end, right at the end of the round. Here we go, here's some of the action. action. And now both men are caught like we mentioned earlier, Joe. And when they're banging on the inside, it's almost impossible for, not to, for them not to connect their heads. And a big left hook at the end of the round for, for Johnny Brimbless. And that's where he's got to be on the outside. When he's boxing the outside, he lands those clean, nice, effective shots. What I do got to tell you as well, though, is that Johnny has definitely found his groove. He's found where he wants to fight. He gave us a little Tyson Fury, leading off the ropes, punching off the ropes, catching off the ropes, and shooting a shot. And I feel he's a lot more comfortable taking the shots from Jose Marufo. He doesn't feel as shaky. He's able to accept them a little bit better. But I still think it's a bad idea for him to be laying on the ropes to let Jose Marufo tee off on him with those wild winging shots. All right, Francis, how are you seeing it so far? Definitely I have this fight even so far. One round apiece for Johnny the Greek right and for Jose Marufo. Oh, thrilled to slip. You can see that eye is still bleeding. Marufo has got some something to deal with there. The cut on uh, Johnny the Greek, on the other hand, is completely shut at this point, appears to be. When Johnny says back like that and lets those fast hands go, he landed two good shots to the body, then came back up to the head. That's exactly what he's going to do is keep the distance because Marufo doesn't have an answer. He doesn't really have anything to, to, to walk in. He has no shots to work his way in there. He's just hoping to land a, a lucky shot. Over the top, and that's yeah. the only chance that is going to give him that opportunity is when Johnny's sitting on the ropes, maybe able to catch a shot. Yeah. I'd like to see Johnny definitely work the jab a little bit more in this round just to set up the shots, right? Just to set up the shots. This is where those heads come together again. Right hand to the body by. A Good shot ball. on this side. When he's against Beautiful. the rope, he's landing that, that, that nice light left hook uppercut on the inside. But that was good ring generalship by, by Johnny. He spun off the ropes, he got away from, he landed his shots on the ropes, spun off, got out clean, didn't get hit with nothing leaning back, and those were builds points and win rounds in the sport of boxing. It's ring generalship, Francis, as you know. Sir. And just like that, one, two, three, clean, out. Get out. Yep. Start again, instead of sitting there for a receipt. And a big right hand left landed. Hook. Right hand landed by Marufo. That's it. Get off, turn and walk. 
Whoa. That the right hand landed because of the lack of defensive responsibility. He was on against the ropes with his hands down, trying to move, and got caught with a nice overhand right and hand. You gotta, one, and you got to know, without question, when you're on the ropes against a Mexican like Jose Marufio, you know he's going to be raining fire because that's his shot. That's his opportunity. Under 30 seconds to go in round number three. Burnplus walks him back in the middle of the ring again. Being warned for holding on. Final seconds here. Round number three. Let's so go to the corner of Johnny Brimpless to see what his has to say to him after three exciting rounds. guy you know, keep boxing I didn't know if they I don't know if I heard them say to not stay on the ropes but for me as a coach against a guy like Jose Marufio the biggest problem is that Johnny Brimpless has had tonight is sitting on the ropes getting hit with those shots trying to lean back when he's boxing in the center of the ring he can't be touched and that should be the game plan moving forward as we close in on the last two rounds of this bout stay in the center of the ring and of course Marufo is going to be trying to lean on him Nice right hand by Marufo. Round four, scheduled for eight. Super lightweights. And Johnny landed good shots. He was landing good shots, but now that he's backed into the corner, Jose Marufo's starting to let his hands go. This is almost similar to the fight we had before, where you have a fighter that wants to make it a war. The only way he can win, if he makes it ugly, Johnny got to try to stay on the jab, spin out, move, create angles. You hear the corner tell him go east and west, go side to side. Nice, Johnny. Get up. that was a nice, beautiful step back right hand yep. by Johnny. And that's what he's got to continue to do, but he can't be laying there on the ropes with this guy. He might catch him in between with something. Bimplus is three or eight and one, and he has only lost. Came in 2019 at the uh, majority decision to Mapongo Kalunga, the Danforth Music Hall in Toronto. Since then, he's got three straight wins under new head trainer Javier Centeno. Two stoppages. As we mentioned earlier, he Centeno coaches Zen Isaias. He coaches, he trains George Gambosis Jr. You know, he's, he was fighting a junior mid middleweight and welterweight earlier. Now he feels he's back at 140 pounds, and he feels that's his strongest weight. That's his best weight. And uh, the guy's fighting tonight as a 140-pounder that's really come to fight and test him. Looks to be a shiner under that right eye of Jose Marufo. Good body shot by Marufo. How come the mouth came the mouthpiece? Oh, there it is. Nice uppercut by Johnny as Jose Marufo stepped in. Marufo swinging wildly here, just letting him fly. And Without the gum shield. The gum shield is on the ground. Right. Good overhand right. Final seconds, round four. It's been a good one. Oh yeah. So, uh, Rufus pointing to his corner, get that mouthpiece for me, will ya? 
All right, let's have a look at some of the action. Well, definitely, Dom, right now on the card, I definitely have Johnny the Greek up three rounds to one. I feel like the fight, he's controlling it. He's making it a little bit more difficult than he needs to by sitting on the ropes, allowing Jose Marufo to get his shots off. His coach is telling him, take that step back, shoot the uppercut, throw the jab, spin out. But Marufo is making it difficult. But nonetheless, he is winning three rounds to one. I got to agree. I got to agree with you, my man. He is, when he is letting those shots go and moving out, he's boxing beautifully. He's letting Jose Marufo in this fight by standing there or leaning the ropes and taking those shots. He doesn't have to do that. He can box, move, pop that jab, pop that chain, and keep Jose Marufo at bay and make it an easy night for himself. Marufo's out to make sure that he doesn't do that, but it's a... <laughs> it's a tough task. And let's, let's take nothing away from Jose Marufo. He's here to win. He's put, he's doing his best. He's swinging hard and lands a beautiful right hand that stopped Johnny on the ropes. Rufo is just non-stop, non-stop coming at him. That's it, work there, Johnny. Don't let him off the hook like that again. Little body combination by Bernpolis, but back comes Marufo. He's got Bernpolis pinned in the corner. I think that Johnny Bernpolis has done such a good boxing uh, job boxing up to this point. And he's taking a lot of steam out of Jose Marufo, where I don't feel he's as big as a threat as he was the first couple rounds. You go forward, Johnny. Definitely, his Jose Marufo's mouth is wide open in this four, in this fifth round. Um, it's just up to Johnny to land that shot, walk him onto a shot, set a trap for him with his aggressiveness, use it to his advantage. A nice uppercut. Now, I couldn't agree with you more, Francis. Use the momentum of Jose Marufo and catch him on a shot coming in. As Marufo is really putting it on. Oh, and he lands the left hand and a right. Just Johnny misses without. a little hurt right now. Oh, the Marufo smells blood. Marufo is non-stop. He's going for it. And there's lots of time left in this yep. round, boys. A minute, 30 seconds. Oh, and there's a good left hook now by Bernpolis. He weathered the storm. You talked about Marufo with his mouth open. That's why he would probably drop his mouthpiece in the last round. But yep. But he's in he's in good condition. He's still going. He's still these arms are still flying. He's he's putting the heat on Burpless here. Burpless now has him where he wants him though on the ropes. Marufo can't do much damage with his back against the ropes. Johnny is tough. We know that Johnny the Greek is tough. He's game, he's ready. Jose, seem, I hope Jose didn't shoot his load, so to speak, get all that energy out in the last round. But Johnny right now needs to take advantage of all that energy that was expended from Jose Marufo. Those are still hard, vicious shots. Body shots. Jose Marufo's throwing. Oh, oh. he just got the right hand. And that oh, is it. that's it, the fight's over. The fight is over. I told you, fellas, laying on the ropes like that, being lazy against a tough charge like Jose Marufo is going to do you no favors. That could have been avoided. Uh, Johnny Brimpless was boxing beautifully at the, at the start of the round and walked himself directly into that corner, corner sat in and corner. let Jose Marufo tee off and the overhand right. And a good stoppage by Mark Simmons. He was drained physically, I feel, before that big monster's overhand right landed on poor Johnny Brimpless's chin. It's just kind of what you said again in the fight before, that mental pressure, that forward aggressive pressure. It wears on you mentally, it wears on you physically, your legs, all that. Let's have a look at the action here from that last round. Is and it was just the right hand that over top that caught him. I thought Mark Simmons did a good job stepping in. I thought Brimpless was hurt. Hats off to both fighters. They put on a great performance. Action pack. By both men. I'd love to see our friend Jose Marufo back on this side of the border as he put on an entertaining, entertaining fight. He earned the victory tonight without question. Yes. I love to see him back on Canadian soil and hats off to Johnny Primpless. He boxed well from the outside. It was just when he took shortcuts or got lackluster in his defense that was the ultimate demise for him at the end of this fight.
<laughs> you know, you know who else wants to see uh, Marufo on Canadian soil? Marufo. The last time he was here, he scored that unanimous decision over uh, Angel Rodriguez, who was undefeated 11-0. Now you find a guy who's 8-1, an up-and-coming guy, a guy who's considered a top prospect, and here he is scoring another victory. But I have to tell you, folks, he was relentless. He was relentless in that fight. And eventually, he warmed down, was able to land that right hand, and it changed, turned the fight just, to, just like that. Hey, champ, I want to know, where does Johnny the Greek Go back to the drawing board and make corrections in your opinion. Um, he's just going to look back at this team. He's going to understand that when he boxed from the outside, he boxed beautifully. And when he did pull back and counter and catch Jose Marufo stepping in, he was very effective in doing that. But the biggest problem for Jose Brimpless tonight, or sorry, Johnny Brimpless, was when he was laying on the ropes and he stood there and engaged. You have to understand if you're a young fighter, if you're fighting a tough guy from Mexico or South America, that's what they do. Every day in the gym, they're going to war, they're banging it out. They're not in there with slick boxers who are picking them apart of them from the outside. So you do what's best for you to win. You don't, you don't do what's best for the crowd to make them stand on their feet. You're in there to win and get a job done. And to box against a guy like Jose Marufo, it's boxing from the outside. He put the pressure on Johnny the Greek from round one to get him exactly in that corner on the ropes to land those shots. All his shots might not have been landing clear, but he was landing on the arm, landing on the back, landing on the shoulder, and it slowly Whoa. broke the Johnny Brimpless down, where he almost retreated into the corner to catch his breath. It was his ultimate demise with that beautiful overhand right by Jose Marufo. And remember, this happened the, the round after we were saying, well, there's Mar Marufo with his uh, you know, mouth open. He drops his mouthpiece. He looks like he may be tiring out. <laughs> Obviously, had a lot left. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And what, what do you think about Johnny uh, Merpolis, the fact that he dropped weight, dropped down to 140 after fighting a welterweight and super welter? And that's and a big drop. I mean, that could have been an effect in tonight. I mean, why he faded, but I also got to give credit to Jose Marufo. He threw a lot of shots. He put a lot of pressure on Johnny Brimpless. So credit to both fighters. And let's take it to official ring announcer for the official. David Neiman with the official time. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 39 seconds of the fifth round. Referee Mark Simmons steps in to call a halt to the action, declaring your winner by TKO, Jose Marufo! Okay, so there he is, Jose Marufo, and you saw the, uh, the other members of that Mexican made the trip here, cheering him on, and they're pretty happy for their uh, countrymen. Jose Marufo, who was, uh, you know, as I mentioned, at one time he was, ah, really had an excellent record, 11 to 1. Here we go. Here's, here's George Nacios with Jose Marufo. All right, we're here with Jose Marufo. That was a war. You took it to him. Give me your impressions of the fight there. Oh, uh, you know, I had to, I had to do this. You know, that was the only way I was gonna win this fight. You know, I was, I'm fighting a, a favorite hometown guy. So the only way I, I had to win is win every round, and that's that's how we do it. That was the plan. It seemed like you were constantly on the attack. Like you weren't playing defense. You were constantly on the attack, looking to land big punches. You took some big punches too, but it didn't slow you down. Was that your whole plan? Never stop. Just always move forward. No, I no, like I say, I've been in the ring with. with Top level fighters, you know, this is nothing, 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 nothing too big for me. Um, you know, I had to do that. I had to fight back. You know, there was no way I was gonna let him him fight uh, all the fight. You know, I had to win every round to win this fight. You cut him on top of the forehead in the first round with a good shot. Did you think maybe that was an opportunity to end it early? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah, I saw the I saw he got cut. I was like, I was gonna go for a cut and open it more, but you know, it's a tough order. So, so he he fought back. The, he fought back. Time, so there was no way for me to stop him just like that. Congratulations on the win, Jose. And I appreciate it. Thank you, our guys, for the support. Thank you, all. Uh, Jose Marufo from Phoenix, Arizona. Hope to see you guys soon. And um, I'll be ready to give you guys another show next time. Jose Marufo! Jose Marufo. He's got one speed. Max speed. Straight ahead. 
never, never, never stopped, man. He was just absolutely relentless in that fight. And like he said, he, he felt like he had to be. He felt like he had to be. And here in that victory tonight from the opening bell, he put his foot on the gas. He took some shots from Johnny Brimpless, but in the end, it was his constant pressure and will to win that got him the victory for this fight. You know, it's, uh, if, you're, if you're Johnny Brimpless and, and you, know, you go back to the drawing board, what do, you, what do you what do you for his for his handlers? What are they thinking now? Are they what kind of a fight they're looking for? How much time are they taking off? What are they going to do here, Steve? Uh, he's going to look for a little bit of an easier touch. Um, Jose Murfo came here and he was gun swinging. He was a dangerous puncher from the outset, especially after Johnny Brimpless dropping weight. I mean, he would want to maybe take a little bit easier of a fight next time and decide if that's the weight class he wants to fight at or if he wants to stay at his original weight class of welterweight. Those are decisions that him and his team know know personally and closely things that I don't know so that's a team for him and his, for him and his team to make but ultimately a softer touch moving forward and decide what weight class you want to stay and fight at and fight it that way and move forward fighting that way climbing the rankings.